Why are so many dogs suffering from health issues? Actress Katherine Heigl, who's helped save over 16,000 dogs through her foundation, says she's seeing more issues with dogs' joints, odors, and health than ever before. And after doing a ton of research, she feels there's one place we can look to support any dog's health. Their food. So she decided to create something she could actually feel good about feeding her dogs. It's called Superfood Complete. Superfood Complete is made with over 30 of the healthiest ingredients on the planet, including several superfoods vital to your dog's health. Badlands Ranch also sponsors the Jason Debus Heigl Foundation, which has helped rescue thousands of dogs and place them in loving homes. Dogs across America are trying this food and experiencing amazing health benefits. Go to BadlandsRanch.com slash save50 and order right now to get up to 50% off your regular price order with a 90-day money-back guarantee. If you want your dog to experience all these incredible things, go to B-A-D-L-A-N-D-S ranch.com slash save50 today. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Baker's, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Baker's worth it every time. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. Welcome, everyone, to Couch Potato Diary. Haven't said that in a little bit. My name is Peter Klein. Thank you very much for coming back um, on this show today. Going to make up for lost time. Uh, first of all, you can see behind me there is a fan. Um, it's like 40 degrees Celsius, uh, Celsius here in Calgary. So the fan stays. Um, but yeah, I've been on Sportsnet 960 The Fan for the... Uh, um, for, for the last couple of days. And so... Uh, last couple of days, geez, last couple of weeks. Um, and, and so I thought today would be a good time to just kind of get back to, to what we missed because a, a lot has happened in the time since I, I have been away. Um, and so I think that this is going to be just, I, I'm uh, what we're going to do today is NBA Eastern Conference, NBA Western Conference. Uh, those are going to be two parts. And then we will get to the NHL uh, tomorrow. But just we're going to run through every team and just see see where they're at. So that is what is coming up on uh, this show today. So thank you all so much. And let's get to it and talk some basketball. All right. Um, so we have uh, quite a bit to go through. So let's Go through it, and we will begin here with the Boston Celtics. And the Boston Celtics are absolutely a team that um, is just kind of a finished product. I know I'm going out of order, but they are the defending champions. Um, they, they haven't done a lot this offseason other than just lock in what they were doing before already. Um, so the, the starting unit stays the same with Holiday, White, Brown, Tatum, Horford. Uh, you keep around Pritchard, Hauser, Cornett, um, Xavier Tillman in there as well. Um, th th this is a, a fantastically built team, and there will come a point where various aprons will come up and cause problems for them. But now is not the time uh, when it comes to, to salary cap issues. This team's championship window is still very much wide open after winning the title uh, just last month. Uh, all right, now back to the alphabetical order of things. The Atlanta Hawks, they make a move sending De um, DeJounte Murray to the Pelicans for uh, Dyson Daniels, uh, Larry Nance Jr., Cody Zeller, and a couple first round picks. It was very obvious that the Murray Young combination just wasn't going to work. Wasn't working, wasn't going to work. It, it just, th th there was, they tried, it failed. Sucks. And now they're in a tough spot because, um, as we'll talk about with a few teams here, they don't own their first round picks. A couple of those go to San Antonio to make the Murray deal. Um, and so they're just kind of stuck right now. They end up getting the lottery balls bouncing their way and they get Risa Shea. Um, a, a lot of 
like if you just watched the draft television show, it's like, man, this guy's lanky. He's got a handle. He can shoot. Uh, what, 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 what was everyone complaining about? This guy's a lock, and it's it's probably not going to be that cut and dry. Um, he he can shoot. He doesn't, but he can't. Like there's now. Lack of three point shooting probably isn't going to be a problem for the the Atlanta um, the, the Atlanta Hawks going forward. I just like they they've built up some depth here now all of a sudden. So like you you have like starting will be young Bogdanovich. I would imagine Reese uh Johnson and Capella, uh, Capella. And then on your bench you do have Daniels, Hunter, Nance, uh, Akongwu, and and Zeller. So you you have pieces there for sure um I'm not a big Trey Young guy I I don't know what it would take for me to get one over as a Trey Young guy but I, I I'm just I'm not with him right now this just feels like a few pieces it doesn't feel like a team and it certainly doesn't feel like a competitive team in the Eastern Conference so I don't know if a young move is coming or if they're going to start over with Young and Reese and basically every one of the veterans that I just listed is a, a trade candidate and they're going to try to go in a, a different direction uh for the Brooklyn Nets they are full-on in tank mode as they send Miles Bridges uh sorry Mikhail Bridges, um, on his way to the New York Knickerbockers for uh, Bogdan, uh, sorry, Boyan Bogdanovich and a, just a boatload of first-round picks. Now, they also get their own first-round picks back in a, a swap here with Houston, which makes this all the more, um, I guess, easy to deal with. But just what, th this is the greatest trade negotiation ever. Like, look, you guys can give us our picks back. If you don't, we're going to be mid as Fuck, bro. You, you've never seen midness the way that we are going to mid. So if you want the 15th to 19th pick in perpetuity, by all means. Or we can just make some trades here. Come on. You want it? All right. Come on. Here we go. Um... This is not a good basketball team. I think that's that that's very clear. And uh, credit to them for for making these big moves and now getting kind of their future under control and now going in a a different direction. Um, like this is just it's it's a full on tank job. And there's a couple pieces that they could trade, right? Like uh, Schroeder might get you something, although the Raptors kind of saw not a lot. Um, maybe Finney Smith might get you something. Bogdanovich, uh, matched salaries, whatever. Like, th there's a couple pieces that can move. Um, th they just locked in Nick Claxton on a long-ish term deal. I don't mind Claxton. Um, I, I don't love him as much as those who love him love him, and I don't hate him as much as those that hate him hate him. Um, I, I think he's a, a, a fine big, but maybe isn't going to reach the levels that I thought he was going to uh, a couple of years ago. On to the Charlotte Hornets. They haven't done a whole lot. Um, this is just a bad basketball team. Like, I, I don't... Th there isn't a whole lot here to, to really break down in terms of off-season moves. It just... You look at where... Where they have kind of um, tried to go and where they are right now, and it feels like they are very much behind schedule. They are already paying LaMelo Ball a lot of money and are um, already just stuck. It kind of feels like... Again, there are some pieces on this team that you like, but overall that this is not a good basketball team and they've done nothing this offseason to to really go out and change that I don't think uh the Chicago Bulls have been very busy uh this offseason they go out and they make a move sending um Caruso on his way to Oklahoma City in exchange for Josh Giddy and to me this has been just an absolute masterclass in being horrifyingly off on your valuation of players. Caruso for Giddy is like, look, if, if there's obviously um, that there was some off court stuff alleged about Giddy, um, things have been dropped and all of that, uh, but that is still absolutely something that just perception wise hangs over him. Basketball wise, you couldn't play him in the playoffs. He got played off of the floor in the postseason for an Oklahoma City Thunder team that was looking to make a push. And so to give up a defensive player of the year and defensive uh, all defensive team member all the time in Caruso is mind boggling to me. The fact that you don't get any kind of picks from a team that's got a billion of them, um, that, that you couldn't get any kind of picks in that trade, horrible valuation of a player. They have absolutely killed Levine's um, trade value to the point that Golden State wasn't willing to just pass off Chris Paul. They, they just waived him for nothing. Instead of bringing in Levine. Now, Wiggins was involved in that as well. But still, that contract isn't exactly an, a, a shining example of cost efficiency 
or anything like that, right? So, um, again, horrible valuation of a player. Patrick Williams, who could end up being a five-year, $90 million player, has spent zero seconds of his career seeming like it so far because of injuries and whatnot, but they paid him as if he has been a rock star for the last four years anyway. Horrible valuation of a player. It is so bad out in Chicago right now, and there is still a long way to go before they bought him out and rebuilt. Like, I, I think, honestly, I think the Bulls are in a really, really brutal spot right now. Maybe the worst spot in the NBA because it is just, it is so bad out in Chicago right now. Uh, Cleveland, their big move is staying the same as Donovan Mitchell sticks around on an extension. And that opens up some bigger questions um, about what they're going to do. Mobley's going to get an extension here soon. The, the, the this, this starting unit of Garland, Mitchell, Levert, Mobley, and Allen I just don't know if it works. And it just, you pluck one piece out and all of a sudden things just seem to, to move really well. And so I still think there's a Garland deal coming. Um, I understand you want Garland around as kind of insurance if in a year and a half, Mitchell's like, ah, you know what? Actually, I've, I've seen everything at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I'm good. Can you guys trade me? And then all of a sudden you go from having two very good players in your backcourt to none. Um, and so I, I get you want to keep some insurance around, but you also want to win basketball games. And not that Garland isn't a winning player. I like him a lot. It just felt like oil and water. And it felt like the Mobley-Allen thing, unless Mobley is going to expand his range in a consistent way, it feels like that is, again, oil and water. So this is a really, really talented basketball team. And I think they are betting on a new coach being able to get all the pieces to fit together because the last one didn't. Um, so they, they are really hoping that that is going to help shift things, I think, um, in their favor because uh, right right now it's, it's not looking great uh, out in Cleveland. Uh, we are doing Eastern Conference teams in alphabetical order here. Uh, the next one is Detroit. They've gone out and added a bunch of expensive vets, and when you have been a bad team for as long as the Pistons have been, um, you, you have to pay that. Th this offseason has been about the Pistons paying the Pistons tax. They had to pay the tax to get Monty Williams out of the most lucrative contract an NBA coach has ever signed, laughably. Um, not that Williams is a bad coach, but I mean, um, and then they have to pay the tax for being a bad basketball team to overpay to bring in a, a Tobias Harris and, and things of that nature. You look at this group and there is something there. Um, they don't have a lot, but there's so, like with Cade and with Ivy, um, maybe something there with Duran, who knows? Um, they, they've taken a few shots like that. They, they are still a ways away. Don't. Don't hear what I'm not saying. That This is not a team that is a, a threat for even the play-in, I don't think, this year. Um, but they're, they're starting to build something. Injuries have been a problem for them. Um, I don't mind going out and getting a few veterans and just seeing what happens and then moving all of them um, sometime around the deadline, either this year or next year. Uh, the Indiana Pacers, their big move is locking in Pascal Siakam, and their big hope is that health sticks with them. Now, they made it to the Eastern Conference Finals a year ago. Part of that is based on the health of the, the New York Knickerbockers and really the, the the health of the Eastern Conference in general. So their hope is that whilst the other teams get healthier, they get healthier as well with, with Nemhard and Neesmith um, and, and Halliburton, I think, was clearly banged up in the postseason as well and was injured throughout the year um, to, to that point. So th they are hoping that maybe a bit better health luck for them helps offset some of the health luck that some of the other teams um, may be able to, to benefit from going into to next year as well. But this is still, like, this is a good basketball team. I don't mind the, the Wiseman bet as your backup center behind Miles Turner just to see what might happen there. Um, I, I don't mind that bet for the Pacers. Uh, continuing on, the Miami Heat feel like they're in trouble, don't they? Um, losing Caleb Martin, like it's, it's not, that's not going to be the first moment on the Miami Heat, um, Heat Culture Collapse DVD, um, if it does collapse. Um, th it, that's not going to be like, oh my god, well, they lost Caleb Martin, and that's when we knew it was gone. But that is a really, really big kind of Jenga piece to pull out of this whole tower and see it start to wave uh, a little bit. Because over the last little bit, like, it has been heat culture, heat culture, heat culture, heat culture, heat culture. But then you get all these guys who were big parts of that who have exited, and you haven't really replaced them with anybody? Hawk has, um... Like, there, there's something there. Um, Jovic, I, I still think there's a little bit more there. Um... 
and and Highsmith is fine, but like there's that they haven't really replaced those guys in the way that they need to to get back to the level that they were. This is not a team that is, oh, well, we got some star players and then the rest just fill out. They, they kind of needed the, the fill out to be a bigger part of it and they, they keep losing that and Martin is a really, really big part of that. So now you look at this team and you have Rogier, Hero, Butler, Jovic, and Adebayo, I guess is their starting group. And then on the bench, it's Burks, Robinson, uh, Richardson, Hawkes, and, and, and Highsmith. I don't, I don't see a whole lot there. And then the problem is they're right up against the second apron, which I haven't fully understood yet, but it, it's, it sounds bad. Um, it, and everyone tells me that it's bad. So that it seems like something you want to avoid. And all these teams are making some really inadvisable moves to avoid it. So, uh, it must be a bad, bad thing. Um, and so for, for Miami, they are essentially capped out with a team that, doesn't feel like it's really going anywhere and still has significant holes. That's not a great spot to be in, culture or not, best coach in the league or not. So they are in a really difficult spot. You have Jimmy Butler's contract extension potentially coming up. Um, he's playing on the last year of his deal. They, again, are kind of banking on health. We barely saw Rogier Butler at a bio together at all. I don't know if we did see them together at all, um, as that bled into the, the postseason. So they are really hoping that if they can stay healthy that you have a, a really dangerous group, but they need to completely rebuild this bench. And I, I think kind of completely rebuild this team. I think the time might be coming now for Miami to, to maybe take a step back. Uh, the Milwaukee Bucks, uh, pretty quiet off season. Um, Torian Prince gets brought in. So it'll be Lillard, Middleton, Prince, Giannis, and, and Brooke Lopez. They also bring in um, DeLon Wright to help them out on the bench. Um, they, another one that needs just better health next year. If Lillard, Middleton, and Giannis can all stay healthy, that is still a really, really, really dangerous big three. Um, a full year of Doc Rivers kind of helping out with the, the defense. It did seem like whatever he did defensively, started to work out there in Milwaukee, but then kind of had a speed wobble there as it went along. Um, but it does feel like, again, you have Giannis, who is, I think, starting to get underrated again in terms of how good he can be um, because of injury issues and the team's relative um, irrelevance in the last couple of seasons. And so I, I think you kind of forget how dominant that guy can be. With him, with Lillard and Middleton, that team should be good enough to contend for a championship. And so, again, health, can they get that figured out? The defense, desperately need to get that figured out. And then this team can be right back there, but they are very much not being mentioned in any conversations right now for threats in the Eastern conference uh we move along to the new york knicks they make what i think is the best move of the offseason and i know we'll talk about another team in a couple here that made a really really big move um this offseason but i think mikhail bridges fits this team why are so many dogs suffering from health issues actress katherine heigl who's helped save over sixteen thousand dogs through her foundation says she's seeing more issues with dogs joints odors and health than ever before. And after doing a ton of research, she feels there's one place we can look to support any dog's health, their food. So she decided to create something she could actually feel good about feeding her dogs. It's called Superfood Complete. Superfood Complete is made with over 30 of the healthiest ingredients on the planet, including several superfoods vital to your dog's health. Badlands Ranch also sponsors the Jason Debus Heigl Foundation, which has helped rescue thousands of dogs and place them in loving homes. Dogs across America are trying this food and experiencing amazing health benefits. Go to badlandsranch.com slash save50 and order right now to get up to 50% off your regular price order with a 90-day money-back guarantee. If you want your dog to experience all these incredible things, go to B-A-D-L-A-N-D-S ranch dot com slash save 50 today. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Baker's, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Baker's worth it every time. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply.
When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Baker's, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Baker's worth it every time. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply perfectly out in New York to the point now where it just feels like this is a team that can go make that run. The moves they made in the or at the trade deadline didn't necessarily work out, but it added a, a little bit of depth, uh, I guess, to this team, but it brings in Bogdanovich, which helps you then move it for Mikael Bridges. And so you have a, a starting slash closing unit, I guess, of Brunson, Bridges, Ananobi, Randall, and Robinson. That la those last two are definitely the interesting ones. How does Randall fit into this? Can Robinson stay healthy? And what do you have behind him? Because I don't think Jericho Sims against Joel Embiid in the Eastern Conference semifinal is really what you want to be rolling out there with. And so they are in a, a, a really... They were in a difficult spot with Hartenstein, and, and having him walk out the door, I think, hurt them quite a bit. But you go out and make this move, you, you, you can't... You can't go into those circles. Um, could they go out and get a, like a Jonas Valanciunas or um, money-wise, it would be tough to make sense, but a, a Pirtle or even an Olenek from Toronto um, or one of the bigs out in Portland, that would be the one. Um, man, if they could bring in Robert Williams, that that one, if they could work out something to bring in Robert Williams and keep it, I know you're gambling on health with Robinson and then Robert Williams, but if you can kind of load manage both of them, which isn't exactly Tibbs's strong point, um... Maybe there's a way they're both healthy by the, the end of the season. Who knows? Um, but this is still one of the best starting fives now in the league. And then coming up behind that is McBride and DiVincenzo and Hart. And that that's now a strong bench unit that the Knicks didn't really have for a lot of last season. To have that all the way through now into the playoffs um, is a really, really dangerous team. And so whether Randall is a trade chip to go out and add one more big piece um, or his offensive game kind of fits into this, we will see. But this is a really, really really dangerous team and one of the better teams in the NBA right now. Uh, on to the Orlando Magic. They make one of the more intriguing moves of the offseason, acquiring KCP. So right now it's Suggs, um, Contavious Caldwell-Pope, Franz Wagner, Paolo Boncaro, and Wendell Carter. Um, we're with Isaac... Why, um, Wagner again, Harris and Anthony coming off of the bench. That's a, that, that is a good basketball team. And KCP, I think with his championship pedigree, he is absolutely one of those guys you can win with sorts of players. Um, but I, I, I do, I do think that they are still missing a level of scoring that, um, that, that they need to get over that hump. They basically need a Cleveland to play poorly to, to be able to, to beat them in any of those games in that series that went seven. Every one of those wins was kind of just bowling shoe ugly. They need more scoring. And KCP is an offensive upgrade over what they had, um, and I, I think stylistically fits what they want to do defensively perfectly. Like, you're talking about um, building a culture and setting a foundation. He is now an Orlando Magic player for what they are looking to do, but I do still think they need a little bit more offense. And I don't... Again, he is offensively an upgrade, but I don't think it's the upgrade that they maybe necessarily needed. Now, unless they got Clay Thompson or Paul George, that, that probably wasn't out there, but we'll see if they can be active here uh, around the trade deadline. But still, this is a playoff team in the Eastern Conference. We get to the other team that has made some big noise. As the Philadelphia 76ers made a bet on this offseason by entering it with a whole lot of cap space, and they come out of it with one of the premier players in the NBA, as Paul George is a member of the Philadelphia 76ers, back to the Eastern Conference for PG. Um, and so that gives you some kind of combination of Maxi, George, Martin, Oubre, Embiid, maybe an Eric Gordon mix is in there as well, depending on, on, on how you want to do it. And so there are obvious questions around this. But if we're playing a video game and just turning injuries off, this is one of the best teams in the NBA. Um, and, and certainly one of the best starting units that the, the league has to offer. But this is real life. You can't just turn injuries off. If we could, the Sixers might have a championship by now. Um, you are banking on the health of Paul George, who has been healthy minimal times in, in the last few years. You are banking on the health of Joel Embiid, who literally his health just cost you um, a, a run in the postseason. Again, if everyone is right, 
You have Embiid, who is an MVP caliber player now, Paul George, who was very recently, and Maxi, who probably could be. Um, and, and so that is really, really dangerous. But it's just, I'm worried about the health. Can Paul George be okay by being a third option? Um, because on this team right now, he is a third option in my mind. And then what do you do about the, the bench? Because right now, um, it is Gordon and Drummond, and then a bunch of guys you've never heard of. And so when you are worried about the health of your team, and also the depth, that's it's a really bad combination. And so the, the whole summer, I think, is going to be debating Sixers or Knicks as the second best team in the East. And right now, like you just, you stack it up. I still think I take the Knicks starting five, and I like their depth a little bit better. So I still think the Knicks are ahead of the Philadelphia 76ers, but the, like, the, this has been very negative about this so far. This is a team that, if everything goes right, can win an NBA championship. Like, within their, um, their, their range of outcomes is a title. That, that, that is how good this team can be. They just need a lot to go right if they're going to do it. But this is a gamble that I think you have to take from a Philadelphia standpoint. They had a bunch of cap space. This was easily the best player available. So you just go for it and you hope that um, finally, after years and years and years, the, the injury luck just happens to, to help you out in, in a way that it hasn't at any point in uh, Joel Embiid's career. Uh, continuing on with the Eastern Conference look, uh, we have a couple of more teams and... We're not exactly ending with a flourish here. Uh, we will start with the Toronto Raptors. And uh, coming up in the next couple of weeks, we're going to do another dynamite looking at the Toronto Raptors offseason a little bit more in depth. But right now, uh, the big stuff was just kind of keeping everyone. Um, they, they sign quickly to an extension. They sign Brown to, or the, the exercises team option. And they sign Scotty Barnes to uh, a max deal. I, I saw a lot of um, discussion online about these deals. The, the Barnes one is just what you have to pay. Um, would it be nice if we had seen him a little bit more? Yes, but I, I think with the levels that he has jumped up already, I do think that you can look at this as a player that you feel comfortable will continue to grow into being one of the best players on this team and being one of the best players in the NBA. The quickly one, I'm, jury is still out, um, but if you're going to make that move, um, with OG going to the Knicks in exchange for players, um, quickly and, and RJ, then you do have to, you, you kind of have to keep the guy around. Um, and this was the, the price to do it. So I, I don't think individually the contracts are all that bad. When you look at the team's cap situation, it's not ideal. Um, I would imagine Brown, that team option was exercised just to be able to, to trade him and lot, not lose that part, um, of the, uh, Siakam trade for nothing to kind of keep that trade tree going. And I do think that as the season progresses, as we get toward the deadline, that is going to be a piece that the Raptors are going to be able to, to, to move. Um, th this is not a great basketball team by any stretch of the imagination. Quickly, Barrett, Brown, Barnes, and Pirtle is actually an okay starting five. They are relying on some kind of a kid stepping up. Uh, they went out and acquired Davion Mitchell, which I like a lot. I think that's a really, really intriguing piece for the, the Raptors to, to go out and get. Um, I talked on on Dynamite about how much I liked um, Grady Dick's growth throughout the, the last season, and, and insert your puns there, um, insert your insert jokes there as well. Um, Agbaji, um, I, I thought he took a couple of steps last season as well, um, so I, I liked him. And then people seem to like the, the, the Mogbo and and the, the, the Walker picks for the Raptors. So there's going to be room for the kids to, to grow into these spots. I don't have high hopes from a Raptors standpoint. Um, and they do kind of feel like they're in a bit of a weird capped out situation. So we will see. But they do, as it sits right now, it seems like they're kind of stuck in the middle again in, in Toronto. Just with less flashy players this time around. Uh, and last one, Washington. They've actually done a bunch. Uh, they've made a few moves. Obviously, the big one is they get the, the second overall pick. They get Alex Saar, who a lot of people thought was going to be the first overall pick. So there, there's at least some intrigue there. Um, he's not entering the best situation with Kuz, uh, Kuzma, but um, Jordan Poole is obviously just completely given up on being a competitive basketball player and it's just cash and checks and making weird basketball plays. Um, but they do acquire Brogdon. They signed JV at th uh, three years, $30 million dollars. Good for JV for getting $30 million. Um, I, I guess your hope if you're him is um, that contract is tradable 
very soon. Um, and, and Washington can just move that, get a couple of assets, and they've basically just signed some free agents. And uh, JV can go off and help a, a contending team. Um, like that, that, again, it makes so much sense for the, the Knicks to try that, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, they also get Sadiq Bey, who I'm not a huge fan of either. Like, this is, this is basically, like, um, you build a team in, or you do, like, an expansion, whatever, in NBA 2K, and you trade all the players that you actually drafted, um, and then you just, all right, free agency, let's just sign all these guys and, and bring them in. This is a, a random collection of players that maybe they'll be able to move, um, for, for picks, but it's, it's not, it's not a good basketball team. Tell you that much right now. Uh, okay, that is going to do it for this Eastern Conference preview. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Part two is going to be coming up here in a matter of moments. Guess what that's going to be? Western Conference uh, off-season look. So, thank you guys so much. Follow me on social media. I am at PrimetimeKline, twitch.tv slash PrimetimePK. Really going to go hard on that during the summer, so make sure you follow me um, there. And subscribe if you want, but the followers is right now what I'm looking for. And, uh, yeah, I will talk to all of you here in just a little bit. Thank you all so much for tuning in. When you protect your corn and soy crops with Miravis Neal Fungicide, you'll start seeing a lot more than just cleaner and greener fields. You'll get longer lasting disease control, better plant health benefits, less plant stress, higher potential yield, and increased ROI potential. Ask your Syngenta retailer about Miravis Neo and start seeing more green in your fields, on your yield monitor, and in your wallet. Always read and follow label instructions. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Baker's, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Baker's worth it every time. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply.